Good morning and welcome to our Mass from the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you and your loved ones are in good health. Please check our parish website for updates and for links to devotions and other information, as well as how to continue to financially support the parish as we journey through this virus pandemic. Thank you for your continued support. Our presider today is Archbishop Hunt, and our entrance chant is number 383. Alleluia. Alleluia. Give praise to the risen Lord. together to give God praise and to ask for his assistance in our needs. Today I will be offering the Mass for the time in time of pandemic, the prayers for the Mass for time of pandemic, and uh, along with the many intentions that we bring to this Mass, I invite you to remember one of the priests of our diocese who today is celebrating his silver anniversary of uh, priestly ordination. Father Jeff Colonel is the parish priest, St. Kevin's in the Goulds, and St. Joseph's in Petty Harbor, and today is the 25th anniversary of his date of ordination. That we may worthily bring all of our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, we call to mind his goodness, and we ask forgiveness for our sins. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray. Look with compassion on the afflicted, 
grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love so that together we may give glory to your holy name through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then Paul said, Into what were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them, Paul entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. God. The responsorial psalm is number 177 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Goodness, oh God. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the disciples, I am leaving the world and am going to the Father. His disciples said, Yes, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need to have anyone question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue to hear John's account of the discourse at the Last Supper, today we hear the disciples say, Well, finally, you're speaking clearly. Now we understand. And Jesus says to them, Good, I'm doing this so that you can have peace. And having said that, he then says, In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. I'm not sure how much comfort that gives to them or how much peace. Uh, that we have peace in the midst of trials, that's what Jesus is, is encouraging for them and for us. Uh, that as we face trials, that we remember uh, that he loves us and that he is God. And so we are at peace in the midst of these trials because we know that through him we will conquer. Today we celebrate a number of feast days as a church. Uh, We celebrate the feast of St. Bede the Venerable and St. Gregory the Seventh uh, Pope and St. Mary Magdalene de de Patsy. And as I was looking at this reading and Jesus uh, warning them about facing persecution, uh, warning his disciples about facing persecution, I thought of two of the saints today and the fact uh, that both of them faced persecution, but in very different ways. Uh, Gregory VII, as Pope, uh, he had been the chief counselor for the four popes before him, so he was very well aware of, of the church and its structures and its challenges, and he initiated extensive reforms uh, that created a lot of trouble. A lot of people didn't like them. And he was persecuted for that uh, and ended up uh, dying in exile. So his persecutions were uh, overt ones, uh, and they were ones uh, in the world. Uh, Mary de Magdalene de Patsy, uh, conversely, uh, was a Carmelite nun, and she lived in a cloistered life uh, and had a very deep spiritual life. But in that spiritual life, she had periods of desolation periods of time within her prayer where she felt a great sense of aloneness and and, and, and being uh, uh, not having God's presence, not feeling his presence or his care for her. So her persecution was a spiritual persecution, uh, not from outside forces, but just in terms of dealing with that dark night of the soul, that desert experience of desolation. You know, we have a beautiful day today, and I hope it's a day that uh, is a good day for each of us, but I'm sure that some uh, are facing some type of persecution, Uh, probably dealing with this pandemic uh, or dealing with illness or dealing with the isolation or the fear uh, that's part of this time. And in the midst of those trials, it's good that we hear these words that Jesus says in today's gospel, uh, that he has conquered the world, that we can be at peace. As we continue in our Mass, we thank the Lord for the gift of his love, and we ask him to help us to be open to that love and to accept that peace that he wishes to give us, especially in the midst of trials. God bless you.
Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence in our midst, we offer to him our prayers and petitions. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders. We pray for God's guidance for them and that they may have the courage and wisdom they need to lead well, especially during this difficult time. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those people that are dealing with any type of desolation today. We pray that in the midst of their trials they may feel God's presence and consolation. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith, that we may open ourselves to the peace of the Lord and that we may share that peace by the way we live our faith. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. We pray that they may have eternal life with God in heaven. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause to add our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us, by your power, a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Bede, Gregory, Mary Magdalene, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion chant is number 6.6 in celebrating song, One Love Released. One people, one love. 
Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to please join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning chant is number 561 in the Catholic Book of Worship, O God Beyond All Praising.